in her panel. Can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. Thank you so much for having me. I have with me our Human Rights Commissioner for the County of Sonoma, Ileana Madrigal Hooper. Um, so she'll be joining me for kind of a little bit more of a discussion on what it is to work in local government and its importance, um, and especially its value with social justice. So a little bit about me is I am the first Latina uh, appointed and voted into the City of Roanoke Park Council. Um, and I am the youngest to serve the city of Roanoke Park and the current youngest member of council throughout Sonoma County. Um, I grew up here, so I've been here for the past 30 years and um, graduated from Rancho Patati High School and am currently um, working through the Office of Refugee Resettlement, which is a federal program and Whole bunch more, but that's just kind of a little bit about me. And then Ileana here is also a Sonoma County local. Do you want to oh. let us know a bit more? Yeah. So uh, I want to thank our mayor, Erna Park Mayor, for having me here and everybody paying attention. So, yes, I'm a human rights commissioner representing the second district that includes Petaluma, Cotari, Pengrove, parts of Rona Park, and all the owner corporate areas of Son Southern Sonoma County. And um, I did and my background is um, I have an associate's degree in political science. I graduated from San Francisco State University in international relations. Uh, and I recently earned my master's degree in public and public um, urban affairs. So I'm very happy to be here and sharing that um, our activism to push the agenda and uh, talking about social justice, it's very important to me as a human rights commissioner we have different people who are, are representing different areas of the county. And one in particular, we have a project that's called Visibility. So it's a survey for everybody who lives in Sonoma County to report any human rights violation, or if they see something that is not according to you know the human rights constitution, it's like how we can advocate and making sure everybody has a dignity and respect in their daily lives and works and so on. I guess part of it we can discuss a little bit too on how we um our our work in local government affects social justice in everybody's everyday life. I know currently I actually just walking in here got a message about um an ordinance through our our public safety department regarding youth. So it is 17 years and younger and having a curfew established and their curfew is 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. but our job is, I'm in a position where I can hear from the community and hear their concerns and then be able to take that back to the table with our chief of, of public safety um, and our city manager and kind of look at, does this function? Why was this put in place to begin with? Are there things that we can look at? Or how do we make sure that we're, you know, ensuring our community is being heard um, and, and respected as well? And it's not just over policing in the community. Um, so those, those, that's like a quick example of, of things that come up throughout the daily doings of, of being on city council. It's not just the mayor that gets these, you know, our district, our city has five districts. So you have five representatives. I am currently the mayor for the year 2023, and I represent district one, which is A and B section here in Roanoke Park. Um, but we all kind of take our roles as if we do represent our districts, but we're we're not going to say no don't talk to us you're in district five right we share the information with one another and we kind of discuss it um at at the dais to be able to ensure that our community is being heard and, and that's our role that's why we were voted in and i think i i'm assuming that's a little bit similar to the human rights commission and your role with them in our districts as well because yes, we have different representatives like three residents for each district so technically like five, 15, 15, yeah, 15, 15 people. So everybody, even though it's, it's appointed by a supervisor, we represent everybody who lives in Sonoma County or works in Sonoma County. So I think um, I think we can move if there's any questions from the audience. Can it, yeah.
Uh, some of these social justice items? Yeah, so for students, I definitely would say it's it's a lot. Like we're, you know, you're focusing on school, you've got your life. Most Most students are also working as well, but definitely pay attention to what is happening in local government. Local government affects your everyday life. It affects where a stop sign goes. It affects where um, streets are getting paved. It affects where we're going to look at a potential new housing or a new business, right? So it does affect your everyday life. Um, and so I think it's important that, I know for Rona Park City Council and most councils within the county have the ability for you to um, join online to watch the council meetings. Agendas are made public. Ours just got posted yesterday because we have a meeting on Tuesday. Um, and then as it comes to the county and kind of the bigger thing, right? Serving on things like the Human Rights Commission or the Status of Women Commission, or I think there's a few more. There's, you know, you can talk about the Water District. Those are great ways to be a part of it. It is a bit of um, volunteer work. There are meetings, but you learn a lot more about what goes on. And, um, and it's, I think it's important to bring in a student's perspective, especially. Um, I know for this council, city council of Ronert Park, up until about two years ago, um, we, we didn't have current students on the council, right? And now I'm the youngest. So I brought down our average. We're working with Sonoma State to build that relationship. And Sonoma State is in Ronert Park. So why wouldn't we have that partnership? <clears throat> and being able to say things like we just passed an ordinance about sideshows, right? And I said, okay, well, what if I'm with my friend and I have no idea they're going to be participating in this? I'm in the car. How do I know that public safety is going to ensure that I'm not then, um, you know, potentially at a thousand dollar fine or six months in jail, right? So our officers were able to explain their, you know, they have an investigative process and they go through kind of this process so that they ensure that they have the person that need to be held accountable and not those that are innocent bystanders. So I definitely encourage students to start looking at what's available so that you can get in there and have your voice and, and bring in a perspective that a lot of times, I mean, myself included, I'm 33. I might, I forget. It's, it's a little different being 18 now than when I was 18, I was 18 and I saw a flip phone. I think Facebook was just starting. So <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> And adding what Mayor Rodriguez said is also, as a student, sometimes you have a full-time job, you have full-time curriculum, and sometimes you don't have space to add in more, but some, if this is public, public meetings. Like, if you are not able to make that commitment, start zooming in. Like, right now, it's available because of the pandemic. It's by, by YouTube, by Zoom, so they can see, okay, I can take and apply to be an appointed by a city uh, commission, like for the Parisia Proloma, there's a youth commission, or for the county commission, like uh, if they like the arts or like infrastructure or planning, all that we need people who are young, who haven't had the background to say, well, maybe I don't have the resources, but we need to make sure we have people representing in those areas because it's mostly retired people or people who already have a home own. Like it's already another perspective. So we need the students to start speaking up. But I, I, I always recommend like by, by steps, like, well, maybe don't apply right away, attend a public meeting, talk to one of the commissioners, reach out to other people who can be mentors so they can walk you like, okay, let's be a strategic. Like right now you have a full-time job, you have a part-time uh, X, Y, and Z, but making sure taking steps towards getting to that public service. Does anyone else have any other questions? Thank you, thank you. And congratulations for being the first Latina mayor. And um, yeah, I can only imagine what, what you went through for that. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, so when my questions are, and this can be for both of you, um, <laughs> so which public policies or where is your work right now in kind of improving the lives of the Latino Latinx community here 
in Roanoke Park or Sonoma County. Um, I'm not from, I'm from San Jose. And so we have a whole different landscape, but similar people. I'm just kind of curious. Um, yeah, what does that look like here? That might start. <laughs> um, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so what public policies or um, policies you're trying to um, back or initiate um, that supports the Latinx Latino community here? Thank you, because as um, <laughs> Mayor Rodriguez said, this is a lot of volunteering time. So right now I'm an appointee for the city of Petaluma general plan update. The county has a general plan that helps all the cities uh, improve the uh, from uh, pub, uh, obviously from education to roads to everything that public, uh, public policy should be for the next 10, 30 years. And especially as a Latina, to me has been very important to bring up like not everybody can just move uh, works where they live. So at least in my part, being part of this general plan update, making suggestions, bringing case studies from, hey, Roseland, should we have the same equitable voice as Santa Rosa when this general plan countywide is happening? There's not a lot of community engagement in, in other languages because not everybody can be fluent in English or understand English. So that's another voice for Latinos, like from young generations or uh, placing in age. So they don't feel displaced just because they're older, they don't have a voice to uh, improve our policies locally or uh, by city or by county. So something that I've been preparing myself to making sure that we always bring voices. And if they cannot be better in person, take advantage of technology, take advantage like maybe they cannot be as themselves, but organize, talking to Almas, talking to family resource centers, like they are having those connections, those uh, trust relationships that can bring back to um, a board of supervisors meeting, to a city council meeting and be a strategic so now that we're having these uh, policies getting updated for the next generation, we have to bring the Latino, uh, Latinx voices and life experience to make it better for us, for make it better for the next generation as well. I don't know if I answer it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say, I guess more locally and for myself, um, again, I've, I've been on council for eight months now, so, or, where are we, April? Oh my gosh, no, it's almost a year. Um, I got sworn in, I think it was May 26th of last year. And that's when I was appointed. And then I won the election in November. So I'm still very new to it. I think one thing is in terms of policy and making those changes, right? It is little steps, but significant steps. I can tell you coming in, um, it was a significant step that I said I wanted my bio on the city website to be in English and in Spanish and it was kind of like oh well there's a you just click the translation button and I said okay well then put it in Spanish and then it can be translated in English and I kind of went oh it didn't cost us more money it didn't cost us more time you just you just put it on the website right and then having my business cards Spanish and English and it's not because oh people should understand English but sometimes we're just more familiar in our native tongues. And again, it doesn't cost us more money, so why not, right? Um, the important thing with our cities is similar to the general plan is we do go over our budget and that's where we put in the money, right? So those are things that I think people have noticed. There are certain areas that have where the roads were paved very nicely and then certain areas that they weren't. Well, why? The money's there. It's still the city. So how do we make that equitable, right? And so you're you're using your money to show your values is what one of um, its council member Judith Che is always says, like your money is what shows your values. So if we're putting our money to disperse it, to make sure that we're making sure that it's equitable, we're, we're providing accessibility as much as possible, then we're showing how much our policy, we're really looking at our at our residents as a whole. Right. Our city council actually looks like our demographics. We reflect what we look like socioeconomically, racially, gender, um, education wise, all of the above family kind of dynamics. And I think the important part when it comes to public policy, because you're correct, San Jose is a very different landscape than it is up here in Sonoma County, not only Roner Park. Um, it's recognizing and challenging the status quo. I tend to be a bit more reserved on how I do it and a bit more, I don't like to say calculated, but 
I like to get folks to think, right? So I was in a room um, and people were talking, it was for businesses and what they were doing. And I kind of looked around and I said, I look like the only Latina when it is known that nationally Latinas are the highest growing entrepreneurs in business. Why am I the only one here and I'm not a business owner? What are you guys doing to attract that and change that? So it's kind of doing these little ripples in, for me so that it kind of, and they all kind of went like, oh, <laughs> you're right. And it's changing how Sonoma State is a Hispanic serving institution. Great. How are we partnering as a city and with the institution to ensure that we continue serving our Hispanic Lat Latino um students so that they're successful. It's great that they're in the door. What is their graduation rate? Do they have food available to them? Does housing function for them or what are other options of housing? Are our roads paved so that they're not getting hit, you know, hitting a pothole and there goes your tire and then you got to put it in the shop and now you got to pay for that, right? So again, there's all these little things that can be a significant change in the success of multiple communities and then the communities within a community, right? So it's also figuring out where are they, what resources are there for them, and at what point do we start saying that we're challenging people's perception on just because I have the ability doesn't mean everybody else does. I am very lucky that I have my car and I can drive here, and I am no longer relying on public transportation, right? Some people have to rely on public transportation, so attending a one-hour meeting or a one-hour class turns into a three-hour event for them just to get there. So it's it's challenging those and looking at the policies and changing it. Giving the ordinance of the sideshow, that was one way of my ability to do it where I said, well, how are you going to make sure that I'm with a friend and I, as a Latina, am not just getting lumped into it? How are we making sure of that? Because I might not have the generational wealth that my counterparts do. I may not have a family that has the legal savvy to get me out of that situation being innocent, right? It's like, well, I might just be stuck there. So it's important to continue the challenge and then con continuing to hear voices like yours in asking those questions of what are we doing with our policies to ensure that we're making this equitable, not only to bring forward my community as a woman and as a Latina, and first generation, but also other communities that are underserved. Thank you, thank you. And I just lost comment real quick. As a as a, a previous student here, um, I know where we get a lot of Latinx students that come here from LA and from different places, Sacramento, different places in California, and they're starving for a community here. And and I know it's it's part of like Sonoma State's issue, but I'm seeing you know seeing you here and represent. I think that ripple effect is gonna continue. But however, it's it's just a little disheartening because I've heard those conversations where they come here and they're like, well, I know my people are here, but where where can I yeah. feel? You know? And so I definitely appreciate you being here. And I'm yeah. gonna tell the students I know here, like you know your mayor's, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Um, uh, just a comment. Yeah, no, Thank definitely. You. And it is, it is. I mean, growing up here, it's almost like an underground network, which is odd because we are here, right? Um, we have, it, it's things like highlighting, like um, there's Taqueria Sol Azteca and they do great stuff in the community, right? Like, so Frankie Lemus was great and he partnered with a couple of folks that do futsal professionally. And we have futsal courts that were converted over an A section that used to be tennis courts. It's two blocks from where I live. I didn't even know that until I got onto council. Right. And it's free access. Friday nights, you can go. Students, younger students can go. There are people there to teach them how to play. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a true community court because you can't reserve it. It can't be just for leagues. So, so you've removed those barriers. Anybody can go there. And, and it's great. And people take care of it. But it is hard because Roanoke Park, um, I think Roanoke Park grew and didn't grow with the community. So we were kind of catching up to those things and, and making sure that we're highlighting our communities. And, and then it is difficult because I think Petaluma has done a great job over the past few years. Like they have a great Dia de los Muertos event that goes on yearly and I'll drive down with my family to that. Um, Roanoke Park, especially now Roseland, you know, they have the Mitote food park. And so they're, they're there, but you're right there. It, 
there's a little bit of a disconnect, especially here in Roanoke Park that we're trying to work on getting, but I, I'm not the sole voice for that. Right. And so it's bringing people back, not only to the table, but to create our, our own table and what we would like that to look for, for numerous generations, um, and different levels. Your city council is doing a, is buying property to the downtown. So yeah. Know. Yeah. So currently we bought property, the downtown property, which was, um, used to be the state farm kind of headquarters and then it was bought by developers and never got developed so it was purchased last year um uh, with our most recent mayor um Jackie Elward at the head of of that and so she did a great job as being also our first black female uh mayor for the city and we are working on developing on developing that now and bringing into how much green space do we want? What's the accessibility? How do we want this for families to enjoy and single people to enjoy and Sonoma State students to enjoy? And I'll actually be back in a couple of weeks to do a town hall with Sonoma State students specifically about downtown to hear what do students want? I mean, it's great. I personally would love a place that I can go like have a, a locally owned and locally made latte and meet with my friends. Students might not want that, right? Um, elementary students, they told me they would like a skate park. Um, it, can we have a petting zoo, right? And so it's like, you want to hear these different things because I can tell you what I want, but that doesn't mean that that's what other people want or could benefit from. So we're we're currently working on that. And so I do encourage folks to I try and post my agenda on my social media so people know what we're talking about so that you know when to come in and do public comment. That's where we hear what the public wants or what the public doesn't want, right? And that might create a situation. We've done it before. People have come to public comment and on the dais, council members or myself will say, I'd like to make a motion to put that on the next agenda. It'll get seconded from one person's public comment. We now have it on the agenda, right? And so are there are things that we're considering um and we have a new city manager who's also our first female city manager and she also happens to be latina and it's great getting her perspective and she comes from southern california as well and so it's it's a lot and it, it i do encourage as eliana mentioned if you can't make the commitment to be a part of a commission or a council um you know, start listening in and start asking those questions and at least knowing who's in charge. I'm not, I am I am the mayor, but it it's a majority vote um, for anything to happen, right? And so it's important to be a part of that and be a part of the conversation because if you're not going to speak about it, then you kind of can't really complain about it. Anyone else have any other questions? I would like just to add that the Human Rights Commission always works to partner because partnerships are vital to create community. And uh, this year is going to be our first time partnering with Indigenous Peoples uh, event in Sonoma in the Santa Rosa mm -hmm. County Fairgrounds. Okay. And it's bilingual. It's free. Like we're starting as a commission on human rights to make sure everybody has a space. Everybody has a safe space so they can connect. So I would love to work also with the Sonoma State University to make sure that they're providing that information in newsletters, in classrooms, because it's all about um, sharing the word, passing the, the information, because we have beautiful social media, beautiful pamphlets, but if it's not shared, it's just there. Mm -hmm. And like, like I said, I guess I, a little bit of facts for folks too, Sonoma County, the, I guess the political landscape is changing a bit in that out of the nine municipalities, seven currently have female mayors. Um, Katadi has their first Latina as well, Sylvia Limos, who just got um, elected in. We have Kay Rivers, who is part of the LGBTQ community. Um, and so, so we're seeing these landscapes change, and which is great. And I do encourage you, like, it doesn't just stop with city councils. There is still our board of supervisors and there's also your judges. So right now our superior court only has two Latinos, one female Latina and one male Latino. Um, and that's out of, I believe, 
14. 16 judges, you have two. That doesn't represent the demographic of Sonoma County, right? And so, and you want to pay attention to your school board. If if you're if you're interested in how do schools work for the kids. Check out our school boards. Check out the Sonoma County um, Office of Education and their board as well. You you know those are the things that they're they're making the choices on curriculum. They're making the choices on what do we want for our students. Do we want it to be a biliterate school? Do we want it to be a dual immersion school? Do we want them to have to start school at eight a.m. or nine a.m. Those decisions. That's where that's being made. And so, it's kind of one of those of it's very easy to get busy with life and bury your head in the sand, or you can try and at least put it on the background, right? Like while you're washing your dishes and listening to these meetings and hear what people are saying. Cause sometimes you might go, okay, we're in good hands. And sometimes you might go, oh, oh no, 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 that I'm going to go to that next meeting and say, no, that's absolutely, that absolutely can't happen. Right. Um, so I do encourage folks, folks to find a way. And, and again, it's, the landscape is changing and not just Sonoma County. I mean, I was able to go somewhere and I met the mayor of Hercules, who's only 25 years old. Yeah. Um, and he's not the youngest ever for Hercules. He's the second youngest. So I fully support getting young folks in there, coming and asking us, ask our city of Roanoke Park. We do do internships as well. If you're looking at where to go to with your career, um, social justice can be in urban planning. Social justice can be in education. Social justice can be in being a public servant. Um, it, it, it can be in so many ways that you don't even, it literally is an everyday thing that I think we've made it seem like social justice and that's the legal system, right? Um, and it's not. It, it's in food service. It's in labor workers and labor rights. It's in putting forward policies on agendas. It's it's literally everywhere. So I do encourage folks to kind of take a look at that or if you're curious, do a, ask if you can shadow a certain employee or do a ride along with our public services department and um, you know, kind of see, yeah, what what are you really about, you know, and what is going on. So I I do encourage that a lot. Is, um, uh, something on my resume. I used to I used to be a staffer for Congressman Jerry Hoffman that represents half of Sonoma, uh, Marin County, and all the North Coast. And seeing that most of the town hall meetings was a certain population, it also makes you realize like you uh, you're doing your part. But then again, connecting, partnering, asking like who other. Uh, elected officials, other activists, or other people that you see as a community leaders, you can uh, join and join forces because when there's more than two, it's always going to be a difference. And I feel like this is a year that we can make sure that we're making uh, real connections so we can improve uh, our city and county and state laws. Because right now, uh, it's it's what you see in the news, Tennessee elected officials being kicked out of their appointed job position. Like it's not just gonna happen in other states. It might happen here. So we have to be conscious. We have to support each other. And as I, at the beginning, I mentioned the visibility project is a survey um, hosted by the Human Rights Commission. It's anonymously. So uh, I'm, uh, if you just Google it, Sonoma County Visibility Project, please share it. So everybody has access to um, to make sure that that it's, 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 they see something, they can report it. Or if they they've seen something, some kind of labor uh, violation or education violation, they can just start it, put it there, and we can take action as a commission and start working with our local uh, elected officials like uh, Mayor Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. I'd also encourage folks to, if you're if you don't want to make the commitment, start looking at organizations, right? So I know um, I used to work in probation and there was the National Latino Peace Officers Association. And sometimes even just joining those meetings, because then you get kind of this big group of people coming and tell you what's going on, right? Or joining, um, sometimes it's like there's teachers associations or just slowly getting in to see what else is going on across the nation or across your state um, and not just pay attention to locally, that affects your everyday life. 
but you also want to make sure that you're kind of seeing what else is going on and what are the trends. Like Ileana said, we're seeing what happened in Tennessee. Um, that's not the first time it's happened there. And it's very easy for us to be like, oh, but that's Tennessee. I'm sure plenty of people in Tennessee used to say that too, right? Um, we saw it with abortion rights and healthcare access. It's it's a major thing. So definitely I I do encourage what Ileana said of making sure you're paying attention and getting involved. Um, my question is as major mayor of the city, how do you think community policing changes the needs of the public? How it changes the needs of the public? Yeah, or like the point of view of the public. I think that our department, um, from what I've been able to do and discuss, have worked really hard to regain the trust of the community, um, not only by speaking with them and doing ride-alongs and attending events. I had our chief deputy, um, well, I didn't have him, but our chief deputy, Kevin Kilgore, he joined here for um, Chief Nader's uh, black and brown and blue. I also was able to attend recently in San Francisco, a women in leadership conferences put together by the San Francisco Sheriff's Department. And they talked about the initiative of 30 by 30. So that is that most law enforcement agencies are looking because they've noticed um, to have at least 30% of their workforce be women because they don't have that. Currently, Rona Park has um, about, I believe it's 17%. So we're about halfway there. I think that we are looking at a different type of leadership and a different type of conversation in the awareness of nationally, a lot of people are not happy and do not like law enforcement and with reason. I mean, it's been proven over and over and over again, right? So what I can do as mayor right now is make those phone calls and say, what are we doing about this? tell me how it's different, tell me how it's better. And if it's not, then we might need to revisit this policy, right? Um, I know a hot topic right now is school resource officers on campus. Personally, because it was a research project of mine, I don't agree with it. I don't think that it's impossible to make it a great program. I just currently with the statistics and the data that I've seen, don't see how it can function. Now, with that said, I was able to call my chief and say, I know that we have this, tell me how it's working because I'm actually not hearing complaints from the city of Rohnert Park that it's a terrible situation for our students to have a school resource officer. Doesn't mean that that's not there, I just haven't heard it. So how do I ensure that our department is holding what they're supposed to do? Their job quite literally is law enforcement. I think societally and nationally, We've also asked them to be caretakers, divorce, you know, kind of mediators. Um, we're asking them to be therapists. We're asking them to, it's very easy to dehumanize either way. We are forgetting that our officers go to very traumatic calls constantly, and they just have to go to the next one, right, to maintain a lot of safety. Um, our officers have been great and our chief has been great in leading the transparency of what do our calls look like? How many calls did we get in the last month or the last year? They actually review their posts or the city's posts about things and see what the comments say to see what the feedback's like. And they'll bring it back and say, hey, we kind of saw this and we think that we'd like to pivot this way to bring a solution for the majority and in the safety of the community. So I'm actually really proud of our department and a lot of the changes that they've made and how open and able they are to take in these conversations, right? They want to be better at their job. They want to do their job and they want to do it the right way. They don't, they don't want to just kind of lose that trust, um, but they also are very aware that a lot of that trust was lost, especially over five years ago because two people decided in their department to make very bad decisions and it's still in the legal process right now, right? And so it, it tainted the entire department for folks that were literally doing their job. So they're fighting that every day. They're trying to prove as much as possible this is not who we are and not what we believed in. Um, 
and we have our community roundtable that has started. I believe they're still taking a couple applications for folks. So if students are interested, I highly encourage that. It's not an oversight committee, but it's a great way to be able to speak for your community um, to our chief of police. Our chief also does chats with the chief that are live on Facebook and YouTube. And it's a great way to ask questions there um, or for him to take the time to be able to give you a bit more of a response on, well, how come you know, that car has been parked and it didn't get moved? He's better able to explain the ordinances and that process. Um, so I think community policing, I don't know that it's necessarily like a thing, I guess you could say. I think community policing in, in my view personally, not as mayor, is is your community taking care of one of enough one another, right? Are we taking care of one another? I think we've lost a lot of that. There, there's not as much of an actual communal response to things. It's very individualized. And so we're working on getting back to that because we have given that responsibility to law enforcement. We are expecting them to give a communal response. And then we're not happy with their response, and then we're then 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 we're and then we're not willing to talk to them, right? So we have to be able to talk to them. And again, Ronert Park has been great about willing to listen, and then actually take that and put it into practice. Um, so I do encourage folks to kind of continue with that, and and keep asking the questions. We did. We actually did. Thank you for reminding me of that. We approved the safe team and um, SSU just and Katati just came into partnership with that as well. So we've actually also seen our public safety department has seen that the calls and our dispatchers are incredible, have been able to facilitate, you know, been able to take the calls and say, oh, this is a safe team response and not an officer response. So we have a team that can respond to mental health crises, right, instead of having an officer there. So I think we are it seems silly, but kind of at the forefront, like in my mind, again, I'm not an officer and this is not against them or policymakers. In my mind, it's like, yeah, why would you send an officer to a mental health crisis, right? But why would we do that? Well, that's because that's what we've expected of them over time. Um, so our safe team is now able to do that and they are 24 seven, I believe that just happened. Um, and I actually just found out that they just launched in San Rafael as well. So I think it's from Ronert Park down to San Rafael is where they're covering currently. And we're hoping to see it continue and grow and flourish and have that be more of a community policing than our public safety department. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Well, I want to invite anybody that is um, knows people who want to have extra um, time advocating for social justice. We have six open seats for the Human Rights Commission. I have business cards, and just let me know so I can share that like, because we're looking for for people who can take uh take you know the fight with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.